Okay guys, so I'm just going to be taking you quickly around how to do a virtual dyno. Um, it's all really very simple, completely 100% free as long as you've got your access ports, um, which again is really a basic that is uh, crucially needed for tuning these cars. Basically it's impossible to do without unless you go with the SCTX4 or whatever it's called. In any case, access port is the way to go. Virtual Dyno. You're just going to go online, type in Virtual Dyno, and it's basically going to be the first thing that comes up, download it for free. Uh, it's going to download onto your desktop, of course, and here it is. So basically all we have to do now is go to our access port manager, plug your access port into your, uh, into your computer. For me, it was the very last data log that I did, so I'm just going to drag and drop it. It was already there. And it is now on the desktop. Now all that has to be done is go to virtual dyno. Very, very simple. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to edit the options. Now the options are very straightforward. Graph. I would like them to show the graph data points. Show a legend because that's very important. Um, show the maximums. It's going to give you a little readout of what the maximums are. And then smooth the AFR and the boost, which is going to show here, um, which is very important. The dyno will go to DynoJet. Uh, the smoothing factor, 3. It's not, you know, completely interpretive or um, way too smoothed. It's from 0 to 6. So a good midway is 3 because I don't know exactly what it does yet. Um, AFR, just label it as actual AFR because that's what it shows up on the export. And the boost is boost pressure, PSI. This is all stuff that I sort of picked up from the little thread that Stratify did on the, uh, on the folks ST forum. So thanks to them, they definitely helped me in trying to uh, learn the ropes with, uh, with this. Um, now, they also preach that this is a very scientific um, you know, process, so I'm going to go through the scientific points that you're going to have to look at. Load runs. So firstly, we're just going to load the run. Okay, here it is. The car is going to ask you what kind of car this is. You're going to have to put in a Ford. There's also a Focus. It is also a manual ST. The car's weight. The car's weight is officially 3,223 pounds or something thereabouts. I figured that there's about 262 pounds of added weight, including me, the fuel that's in the car, and uh, odds and ends that are in the trunk. Um, of course, when you repeat runs and logs and want to sort of track your progress, you're going to want to keep this weight as, as stable as possible. Of course, I'm not telling you don't uh, go on a diet. Um, or eat more so you can sort of keep, you know, the car's weight as, as stable as possible. It's going to, to very, very minutely affect if, you know, you're 10 or 15 pounds up or down. Uh, but if you start, if, you know, you're doing the run one day uh, with, you know, a pallet of bricks and a TV in the back, and you're making 200 horsepower on this uh, V dyno, and then the next time you do it, um, you've got your 12-year-old, uh, you know, nephew driving the car uh, with no one else and nothing else in it, and you pick up 60 horsepower. Um, I, I wouldn't be so quick to attribute attributing it to uh, a good tank of gas. It's all of the weight that you just lost from the car. Uh, so again, just try to keep the weight as stable as possible. Here it's going to give you the barometric altitude, um, or I'm guessing this is probably sort of atmospheric pressure. Uh, atmospheric pressure is 29.235. I don't know. I don't know what this is, but you're going to want to keep it around the same barometric altitude, which is going to give you here. Um, the air temperature was around 77 degrees today. Um, every time you want to repeat your data log, you're going to want to keep it around the same temperature. And then for the gear. The so when you pick your gear, which is 
you know, the gear that you did the, the pull in, I did mine in a fourth gear, it's going to spit out this graph for you. Now, um, a few things that are going to change the way your graph looks is the smoothing factor. This is what zero smoothing looks like. This is what level six smoothing looks like. Um, Stratified suggests a level three smoothing, but I'm not so sure. But I'm sure Stratified knows best. But I sort of like a level one smoothing. Of, you know, it, it sort of gives you a better idea of what you're doing. You see with here, you see a little bit of a dip. Um, a little bit of a stronger dip between 35, or I'd say maybe 3600 RPM, and uh, 4400 RPM, you could call it, for the, torque, for the torque curve, so it isn't a linear going down. But that's fine. In any case, so these are the important things that you need to have right here. Your gear, your car weight as approximated by yourself, uh, tire width calculator, here I have a 235, 40, uh, 18. That spits out a tire height of 25.4 inches. Um, so very simply given to you right here, your graph. So the maximums are 269 horsepower at, as nearness makes no difference, 4,400 RPM. Um, am I reading that right? Yes. 4,400 RPM and 358 pound-feet of torque at, as near as makes a difference, 3,300 RPM. With a smoothing factor of 1, which gives you this graph as you can see it here. This, of course, is your air-fuel ratio. Your engine speed and RPMs sort of goes up here and corresponds to both of these graphs, even though they look sort of separated. In any case, all of these things are just automatic, uh, you know, things that... It's just, it's just going to be picked up from the graph. Um, and uh, very simply put, you know, this is uh, this what you're going to be getting. Now, a very important factor here that you have to look at is repeatability of this exact reading. Uh, you have to do it in a very scientific manner, and that means that you're going to have to take all of your logs at the same time or not at the same time, sorry. You have to do it at sort of very similar um, settings. So same temperature, same altitude, same try to get as close of a humidity as possible, um, same stretch of road if possible, try to repeat two or three logs at the same time and then lay them on top of each other. Uh, and you can just do that by load runs and then picking several runs. Uh, Try to limit as many factors as possible so you can get sort of the same uh, almost identical settings for, you know, everything. So that is all good. If, uh, you know, you do all of those things, you're going to be able to figure out how your uh, tunes are running, how your, um, you know, everything is, is going for you, your mods, your you know, your fuel, and you'll sort of get an idea. In any case, uh, hope this sort of helped you guys out. If you guys like this, please feel free to share it, uh, comment down below, like the video, and subscribe to the channel, please. Um, and I hope this sort of helped you guys out. Huge shout out to Brad Barnhill, saving the car community hundreds of thousands of dollars since 2012 on dynoing costs. In any case, also a big shout out to Stratified Auto that helped out uh, with their forum post to get me to learn the ropes with this. Big shout out to you guys. Thanks so much for all the help that you guys also contribute to the community. Uh, very admirable. And this is basically, you know, the entire idea. Help out the community. And these, you know, this is the only reason that I make these videos. In any case, um, hope this helped out and I will catch you guys next time. Peace.